Welcome, movie fans, to a brand new episode of Hollow Victories, where we watch movies you don't want to waste your nine lives on. I am your host, Matt Presents, joined, as always, by my feline co-host. Hello, my name is Mr. Lickboot, but you can call me Mackle. You'd hire a lawyer named Lickboot, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's uh that's the guy who does all like the psyops on Twitter like like whenever whenever like police or like like something bad happens with the police Lick Boots the one on there like well we should respect the police if you don't break any laws <laughs> you got nothing to worry about yeah <laughs> uh. Uh, and t- today we've got a matchup of uh, movies from the late eighties early nineties rebooting classic cat cartoons from from the early days of animation uh it's felix the cat the movie from 1988 versus tom and jerry the movie from 1992 yes and i don't know which one do we want to start with i don't know but real quick just to get this out of the way i feel like i already know where this is gonna go but just for clarity's sake do you do you have history with either of these two properties I'm assuming yes for one, no for the other. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I I am a lot more familiar with Tom and Jerry than Felix the Cat. I am probably more familiar with Felix the Cat than I th- I think you are. I don't remember if I've seen a short or not. It's very possible when I was really little I did, but I did not like ever look into him as a character. I know him. I think he even has a good design. I just don't don't watch Felix the Cat. <laughs> I swear to God, I had like a Felix the Cat CD-ROM game when I was a kid. <laughs> I maybe I'm wrong about that, but I feel like I had a maybe 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 I had a CD-ROM that included an advertisement for the Felix the Cat game. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. I don't know. I don't remember. I, I doubt, obviously I am more familiar with Tom and Jerry. I think I think Tom and Jerry are like far more prolific characters. At least in the Western canon. They're certainly utilized more. Even to this day. Yeah, Felix Felix the Cat is one of those, like, old school, like, really old cartoon characters who didn't really have much of an established personality. Yeah. Because, like, back in the day, you would just make, like, a cute cat character, and then they just go on wild, zany adventures. You just put them into, like whatever you wanted oh felix the cat goes to a haunted house felix the cat goes to ancient greece felix the cat he's got magical powers now yeah i'd be willing to bet that this movie had very little to do with some of the old shorts honestly like mickey mouse was kind of a character like that for a while (laughs) eventually they did give him more of a personality but like the old school mickey mouse cartoons he was just kind of a character who would show up and do whatever just kind of observe what would have, whatever was going on it kind of feels like both him it feels like a lot of characters start like that actually where they almost start off like a little bit like i don't want to call them assholes but mischievous like they're kind of there to be like uh you know they're they're there to have a good time but in having a good time they cause some like mischief i mean steamboat willie mickey's literally abusing animals to make music but i also don't think you were supposed to view mickey as a bad character in that short there's a lot of characters that start off that way, I feel. And then, like, as time goes by and they get more developed, they kind of take away some of the more mean-spirited qualities. Like, so- I, I'll bring Sonic into it, too. He was like that, too. Honestly, like, I, I, there, I did get big Sonic vibes from this. I think Felix the Cat is one of the characters that inspired Sonic. Design-wise, it's possible. I, I have never heard that before, but it wouldn't, like, completely surprise me. Um, cause I mean, even his, his eyes like are pretty similar to Sonic's actually, if you just kind of like erase the line in between them. Uh, I, I feel like you could almost swap Felix in this movie out for like Sonic 1, Sonic 2 era Sonic. Mm-hmm. Like obviously a lot of elements from the games would be missing, but like if, if you just like put him in this movie... Like, early Sonic into this movie. It it makes sense. It'd be pretty much the same. So, Felix the Cat the movie uh, is about this magical kingdom uh, is under attack by, by the evil Duke of Zill. 
uh, and Z- the, the Duke of Zill's robot army is marching on the castle, and they, they, like, capture the princess, but before they can capture her, she puts, like, a call out to find a hero with her, like, dimension machine, and the hero that her machine finds is Felix the Cat. Honestly, now that I'm describing it, Pirates Who Don't Do Anything vibes? Kind of, kind of Pirates Who Don't yeah. Do, kind of the setup for Pirates Who Don't Do Anything, actually? A yeah. little bit? So anyway, she brings Felix the Cat to her dimension with his magical bag, which is something left over from the old cartoons. He did have a magical bag in the old cartoons. I don't know how often that show... It was, like, sort of a late addition to his character... But he did have a magical bag that is something left over from the cartoons. Pretty much the only thing left over from the original cartoons. I was kind of under the impression that it was just like a one-off, but I could be wrong about that. And so in this movie, he has to like, you know, navigate his way through this new universe, trying to find the princess he's trying to save... He gets captured by Lord Zill, and, or well, one of Lord Zill's minions, rather, and forced to participate in this circus. But as luck would have it, the princess is also in the circus, and so he kind of helps save her. I'm describing the plot in a very straightforward way, but my god, does this not play out in a straightforward way? The, the story of this film is almost complete nonsense. <laughs> like, it, 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 it borders on just like pure absurdism um uh, michael what did you think of this film i i hated this one um you know I, I, it's probably not too uncommon of a thing to hear on the show but i feel like i i can st- i feel like there's a once where i start off a little bit more positive like there's a little bit more benefit of the doubt going around I think that this movie has some interesting looking characters. I think that there's some decent animation parts. Other parts where it's like, I wouldn't call it effortless, but I think there's scenes where the animation's bad because they're almost doing too much of it. <laughs> like the characters are moving way too quickly. They're like, it, it just kind of feels like, it feels like waving keys in someone's face. You know, it's like, it's trying way too hard at parts where it's like, you got to find a good balance. You got to find, you don't, you don't want characters to be moving too frantically all the time. But, uh, I think that there are some good drawings. There's a few interesting ideas here and there. Uh, some of the music sounds nice, even though I think the songs in this movie are, are all pointless. Yeah, it's it's almost that, like, you know, Legend of the Titanic style, where it's, like, both overly animated and extremely cheap. It's under-animated in a lot of places, too, because you have this princess character who they, like, refuse to, uh, like, animate with any emotion I... what, whatsoever. The lip sync is also terrible in this movie. Granted, it wasn't made in the U.S. I mean, it could have been made with like different voices in mind or it could have just been animated before the audio for the movie was even started being worked on. Yeah, it was it uh, was like a Hungarian animation studio making this. So the lip sync is way off. Uh, I mean, because a lot of the times Felix isn't even speaking, but they put voiceover over it. Terrible audio, by the way, in the movie. Um, like, some of the songs sound all right, but it's also just kind of like sound effects aren't synced up with what's happening at all. Lip sync is terrible. Audio mixing wasn't too bad. Like, I mean, I, like the music was never, like, drowning out the characters' voices or anything, but go ahead. At the carnival, every time they cut to the crowd, like, like they'll cut to the crowd just, like, going insane, but then, like, the background will be, like, this kind of light applause where it's like, oh, yeah. And it's, it, like, doesn't match. Does not match at all. Normally when I'm, like, uh, criticizing the audio in a movie, like one of the Hollow Victories movies, most of the time it's, honest to God, audio is probably the thing that's most consistently done decently in most of these movies. Like, even bad movies normally have audio figured out at the very least. The, like, the biggest complaint I'll ever have is, like, the mix was really bad. I can't really like, recall any scenes where the mix was too bad in this movie. It's more so just the sound editing is bad. Like, nothing... There's certain things where, like, characters are, like, banging against something and there's no sound effect added whatsoever. There's scenes where they, they pick and choose what's going to have a sound and what isn't. And there's also, like, there's a scene where the two mice are doing a tap dance. The tapping is not synced with them at all. Like, not even a little <laughs> bit. A mouse will tap its foot once and you'll hear four taps for it. 
Like it's 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 really off. Like they did not give a shit doing the audio editing for this movie. That's a more nitpicky thing that most like general audiences aren't going to notice. But it, it, yeah, whoever did the audio editing for this movie, it, it genuinely feels like they just they completely half-assed it. <laughs> Which, to be fair, I might I might half-ass the Felix the Cat movie too. <laughs> I might I might not want to give it my all either. Here's the thing, I, I, I was a little skeptical going into this one, but I think this is going to be an interesting episode, because I think you and I do kind of disagree on this one, just based okay. on what you said about it. Because sure. I, like, I'll admit it, Felix the Cat, terrible movie, does not mesh together at all, feels like a thousand different disparate ideas thrown into one movie. But I was kind of entertained by it. I kind of had fun with this movie. <laughs> I don't think there's like zero entertainment value to it. I think there's some good ironic enjoyment that can be had from it. Hi, Sadie. Um, and I think that there's some, like I said, good visuals. I even think there's like an unironically interesting idea here and there, which we'll talk about. But I, I, it's definitely not one of the worst things we've talked about. Um, it's very likely you enjoyed it more than I did. I, I... <sighs> I, I liked some things about it, and I found ironic humor in some things. I and mean, this was definitely one where we were making a lot of jokes during our watch of it. But I, I couldn't cling on to a single character, and the story is nonsense. So I don't know. It's just I, it did start to get boring for me after a while. I need something, you know. I need something to to keep me in. But tell us, tell me what you what what you found fun about it. I don't know. It's just it's just so like weird and nonsensical and like. For one thing, the story is way too overcomplicated. There is way too much going on in this movie for a Felix the Cat movie. <laughs> like, it it opens... I mean, okay, it, it opens on uh, the Mario 64 opening <laughs> where a CG Felix just shows up and says, Thank you so much for watching my movie. But then after that, it's just this, like, huge lore dump about this princess and her kingdom and and all the attacks that it's under and and it's like a while before Felix even shows up. <laughs> yeah. But and and then like Mitzi came home in the middle of this and they were like I don't know, Felix the cat doesn't look like he belongs here. And I'm like, none of these characters look like they belong. Every character in this movie looks like they are from a different movie. Yeah. Right, you've got you got Felix the cat, who looks like a 1930s cartoon, because he is... Oh, 1920s cartoon, actually, I think is where he got his start. Then you've got the princess, who looks like an anime character. Then you've got Poindexter and his grandpa... Who, who kind of look like, uh, well, he, he kind of looks like Professor Egad from uh, Luigi's Mansion. I also thought he kind of looked like uh, Peabody other, and Sherman. Well, the other one looks like Dr. Wily, then. And then there's, like, the Yosemite Sam-looking character. Very and Looney Tunes-ish, yeah. Yeah, the, the villain, uh, the Duke of, the Duke of Drill, right? The Duke of... Zill, whatever his name Something was. Something like that. Zill, Zill. He he gave me big Buzz Lightyear of Star Command vibes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then and then there's like his assistant who's like this weird flea looking dude, and him and like all the random ass monsters in this look like they're from like heavy metal or like a Ralph Bakshi movie. <laughs> I thought the one general-looking character at the start of the movie kind of looked like he belonged in something like The Christmas Tree. <laughs> he had a very weird-looking face, and it wasn't emoting very yeah. much. I mean, and this is kind of what I like about it. It's just all these, like, super disparate elements. Like, none of this meshes at all. It does not work as, as if, like, a final product. But... It, it, it's so amusing to watch just <laughs> all these like different looking characters. Like like during this film, I thought of like a hundred other different things I have seen in my life. Right. Like it just steals from everywhere. And like the thing is, I think that um, I think that the character. I think you're right. I do think that does make it more interesting. Um, but I, I also feel like that can only carry something for so long. In both something that you're actually enjoying or or something that's like kind of a so bad it's good watch. 
because I just think that, I don't know. I just, I'm not even like in an ironic sense was I getting a lot from the characters, you know, because I just found most of them to be really dull and not dull in appearance, just dull in dialogue and motivation. And I, I guess like, you know, we're going to talk about Tom and Jerry in a bit. That's a movie where like, it's all very generic like motivation for every character, but they go so over the top and stupid with it that it like cracks me up. Um, it feels, I don't know. I feel like even in a so bad, it's good movie. Having a little bit of focus helps. Cause like, yeah, this movie was just so weird that the weirdness kind of lost its fun after a while for me. Yeah. I mean, I get that. Like I, I'm not, I'm not going to act like this is like a perfect, like hilariously surreal movie. I think it probably would help to watch this movie high, which I was not yeah. while watching this, unfortunately. I think I would have liked it more high, yeah. I just watched a movie really high last night. I watched The Lion King, and it was amazing. It's amazing watching that high. I, I don't know. When I'm high, I typically watch stuff that I know I already like, though. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I mean, I mean it's, it's like the villain. The villain was high the whole time. He kept puffing smoke out from under his, his yeah. helmet. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> Although it was, uh, it was green gas, so every like the first time it happened, I'm like, did he fart under his helmet? <laughs> he has an ass for a face. He takes the helmet off. It's like that South Park episode. Um, the ass people of Orbulon Five. <laughs> I like the uh, I liked the one scene where it's the headless people trying to hunt down heads flying through the sky. That was, like, a really weird and trippy idea. Like, I could see that in, like, some fucking music video, honestly. I thought that was a neat idea. Um, but it's, it's uh, one, super out of place. Felix the Cat is not the movie to do that with. And, um, and two, it was very short. Did not take up a lot of the screen time. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of ideas in this film, but they just sort of, like, introduce and then kind of gloss over. Yeah. I'll grant you it's it's a it's a fairly ADHD friendly movie. Like it's it's always moving. Yeah. Although they do spend a lot of time at that circus. Now it's not all like in the same room. It's not all in the same scene, but yeah. once he gets caught by the circus, we're there for almost half of it. I don't know, any other specifics you want to talk about or do you want to move on to the cast and I mean like the songs were kind of good, but like on their own, but it, they just didn't really I... fit in. The weird thing about the his songs is like, okay, so at the very beginning of the film, there are some foxes who are like attacking Felix, and they have a song, and then that's that's really the only big musical number in the film. The princess gets a musical number later at there's like a, the circus. There's a big one at the but circus not, with the like audience. Yeah, but it's it's not like. It's not like, oh, a musical, musical number that just comes out of nowhere. It's like, oh, I am giving a performance to an audience. Mm. Yeah. So the the Fox one is feels a little out of place. <laughs> well, the Fox one's out of place because it contributes nothing. Yeah, and then the foxes disappear. Yeah. And, the and, and maybe they were pissing on Felix, but, like, it seemed like only one of them was really trying to piss on him. And couldn't. The others just kicked like dirt at him, like as if they did just piss. I almost feel like that was like an idea that they were like had in there and were told to cut it, but they didn't want to cut the whole thing. Yeah. The song's very catchy, even though it's like nonsense. Even the lyrics, like not not just that they put it in there for no reason, but also just the lyrics are nonsense. Like the end is like, I guess you just outfoxed yourself the way I knew you would. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It, it is kind of a, it's definitely a funny movie to observe. I just don't want to like sit through the whole thing, I guess is my thing. Far from the worst thing we've covered, but it's just like, I don't know. It's just like so substanceless, you know, there's just so little to it. And it's clear that a lot of people put effort into it because again, like making an animated movie in general isn't easy. Even making a shitty one isn't easy because animation sucks no matter what. But that was just kind of rambling, honestly, at this point. Do you want to talk about casting? Uh, sure. I don't know if there's anyone interested in this one. Uh, David Cullen plays, plays Felix the Cat. 
It is uh pretty it, it's his only movie appearance. It's the only movie he ever appeared in. He did a little TV work, but his his only movie appearance is, is playing Felix the Cat in this film. God, I don't know if there's anyone notable in this. I'm looking at this and it just kind of yeah, I mean, a, a a someone I would call out in in the 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 crew of this, the person who wrote the movie, Pete Brown. This is his only film writing role. He was like a, a poet. He was known for his poetry, and he wrote some songs for the band Cream. So that's his previous work is is writing music for the band cream never wrote a movie before never wrote a movie again someone who was slightly involved in this movie did a voice i don't know if he did anything else it says he's a musician don or or olo oriolo yeah uh he he made the i think he directed felix the cat saves christmas did not direct this but he directed the last felix the cat thing to currently exist and in this, it just says he voiced a creature, which, that's a little vague. <laughs> yeah, not a, not a very well-known cast here. Um, do we want to talk about any characters in particular? <sighs> um, I mean, I feel like I've said most of what I need to say about them. Like, I think that the princess character was very dull. It feels like they're afraid to give her expression or make her a cartoonish mm-hmm. Because they just want her to be attractive, but I think they actually end up doing the opposite by doing that. Because now she just looks like a zombie through the whole movie. Yeah, and and I mean, she like barely shows up. Yeah, she's at the beginning to beg for Felix's help, and then it's like halfway through the movie before we see her again. And then you've got like uh, the professor and his son Poindexter, who just like these scientists chasing down Felix in an attempt to like study his magic bag. Chris Phillips, who plays the professor, he has been in stuff, not a lot, but he has been in stuff. He was in Ice Age 4, he was in Epic, and he was in Doug's first movie. Shit! So, someone else was also in Doug's first movie. Alice Payton, Layton, I think, as Madame Pearl. Yeah, she was in Doug's first movie, too. Oh, she she sure was. And Heavy Metal, which I referenced earlier. Hall of Victories, Doug's first movie versus kick Assia. <laughs> that's that's a good pitch. I'll write that one down. Alice Platon was in the My Little Pony. Oh, is this our combo? Yeah, you're right. All right, Alice Platon, welcome to the welcome to the list. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I think that's that's maybe everyone. Tibor Hernandi Hernadi. That might be pronounced differently than that. It's a Swedish name or a Hungarian. A Hungarian name. He directed this. He has directed exactly one other movie. Although I think he's done like some TV animation. Mostly what he's known for. Oh, there's the butler. We we, we, we gotta talk about like the kind of evil butler's voice here. Because he sounds like... He, he sounds like a really young person doing an old guy voice. Mm-hmm. Like someone like 15 or 16 going... Oh, it's me. I am an old man. Yeah. This is my old man voice. Yeah. He's also, he's like transparently evil from the time they introduce him. But at the same time, like, he doesn't do anything. (laughs) (laughs) He doesn't really help the villain that much. Like, there's, there's no great betrayal in this movie. He... He barely shows up in the film. He's in the opening yeah. scene, and he shows up once more later on. Uh, we could also talk about the ending of this movie, where, like, we, we were comparing this to, like, a Philip CDI game, like, the Faces of Evil or whatever. And at the end, Felix just, like, throws a book at one of the robots, and that saves the day. Which is also what you do in one of the Philip CDI games. You throw a book at him and it absorbs him. No, not into the pit. It burns. Yeah. (laughs) Good. The ending almost feels like it's trying to potentially set up a sequel. I'll be back. He 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 says I'll be back in the weirdest way. Like he he says it like he was the victor here. He's like 
I'll be back, and then, and then disappear. No, it's not like an angry, vengeful, I'll be back. It's an, uh, I've won this, and I will be back. <laughs> it's very abrupt how the whole thing goes. Like, once they're actually facing him, he's gone pretty quickly. Yeah, I don't know, kind of just a consequence of the, of the like, weird pace on this one. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's under 90 minutes. This was... Uh, might be under 80 minutes. It was real short. It's like an hour 18. Yeah, and it, it kind of felt longer to me because of how awful the pacing of this movie was. And uh, shout out to archive.org for being the only place this movie is streaming. Hell yeah. If you, if you want to watch Felix the Cat the movie, you gotta watch it on archive.org. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know what? Uh, maybe that's better than paying for it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Felix the Cat is a character who's in the public domain. At least, like, a little bit. It's, it, is, it is like a weird Mickey Mouse situation where it's like, okay, Felix the Cat is public domain, but, like, anything recognizable about him is not. Because <laughs> he, he, he's actually a lot older than Mickey. He's, like, almost a whole decade older than Mickey. But uh, I guess, like, the copyright expired on his earliest cartoons, like, not, like, the TV show or anything. I think that, uh, weirdly enough, DreamWorks purchased him in 2014, it seems. Purchased the rights, but I don't know if, like, it expired, like, right after they bought him. Or if they just didn't do anything with him soon enough. I don't know, I don't know the exact year Felix the Cat went in the public domain. Uh, well, he, he debuted in 1919, which means his stuff probably became public domain before the Copyright Term Extension Act of 1998. So he, he's been in the public domain at least since, like, the 90s. But, but yeah, also, like, so, so much of the character's, like, personality is still trademarked. Because there's definitely been bullshit with extending copyrights, but it's not... Felix the Cat is not like Mickey, where, like, there was much of a fight being put up, I don't feel. Yeah. Yeah, no, they, they, he, he is not, like, the icon of anything. I couldn't even tell you the studio that was first making Paramount? Okay. He got his start with Paramount, apparently. Well, maybe DreamWorks owns him, and in that sense, they can do whatever they want with him, but maybe that's the idea. But they have, like, that was ten years ago, and they've done nothing with Felix, so... I, I don't and I don't really blame them for not wanting to rush to do anything with Felix, but I do I do question why buy him if you're not gonna do anything with when, him. When when he's like kind of public domain anyway, and you haven't done anything with him since you bought him. Yeah, like if they had like a plan, maybe they had a plan for something that didn't fall through, go through. But I mean, they could. Uh, I don't know. I feel like Felix the Cat is one of those things that definitely doesn't need to come back, but. The one thing that you do have with Felix the Cat is, like, one, some recognition. Most people do know who he is. I don't know. I would say most people know a lot about him or have watched the shorts. I know I haven't. But it seems like a lot of people at least know him. So there's recognition. Like, so he's recognizable. And two, I don't know. You Like, you could, uh, it's a good design. So you could, like, use that and, like, if they wanted to do, like, they could do something completely different with him. I don't know. DreamWorks could, like make something that made the character popular again, and they have, like, a few advantages. Because DreamWorks is pretty good at making something that you wouldn't expect to be... Excuse me, making something that you wouldn't expect to be good, good. Yeah. And then they're also really good at making things that you would assume would be great, horrible, but... Megamind 2. Well, everyone's, like, complaining about Megamind 2 and Kung Fu Panda 4, granted to Kung Fu Panda 4 on a way smaller scale then Mega Man Mind 2, but then Puss in Boots 2, a sequel to a movie that no one really praised. Like, it's their best movie in forever. But, I mean, they, they had, like, that Peabody and Sherman movie. They could definitely do, like, a Felix the Cat yeah. movie in that sort of vein. I actually heard pretty good things about Peabody and Sherman. I did too, actually. Uh, ne ne never watched it, just heard like vaguely positive uh, mostly i think people ignored it i think people don't really care about peabody and sherman as characters much like felix the cat but yeah you know they could still do something with them maybe peabody and sherman is why they never did anything with them like it didn't maybe. it didn't do that well and they're just like all right nah scrap the felix the cat shit yeah i do wonder because like i'm trying to think has there been anything that did like come back from pot like 
a long hiatus and was able to get popular again. Because you can't say that about Mickey, Looney Tunes, or Tom and Jerry. Those have been on and off so much the last, like, few years that it's like, they've never gone a 20-year gap. Felix the Cat went through a over 20-year gap before the movie came out. And then they did stuff with his character yeah. for a bit. He had another TV show or two. His last thing was a Christmas movie released in 2004. So that's another, he's had more than one 20 year gap in his runtime. So it's like, he is not the same as like Mickey or Bugs. Like he is, uh, it, it would be, it would definitely be harder to sell a product with Felix the Cat than Bugs Bunny. I mean, not, not that Warner Brothers knows any differently, but. But is there anything that came back after such a long hiatus that was ahead? I'm trying to think of one example. I mean, Mad Max, there's pretty big gap between Thunderdome and Fury Road. That's true. But even that, even that is like, I, 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 I can't think of anything from like, I don't know, old school Hollywood that got rebooted that has been like successful since then. That has like reestablished the brand. Yeah, I'm drawing a blank. I've seen characters come back from like, make a comeback, but that was, like, maybe after, like, not even five years out of the spotlight, but, like, five to ten years of only release and stuff that people didn't really like. Yeah. Or having, like, a Sonic, where, like, a lot of video game characters, like Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, um, and then they got Yeah, I mean, vi video games, I think that does happen, where, like, like, characters from the early days of video games do get to come back sometimes. Yeah. I mean, Alex Kidd, like, Sonic, the original Sonic, uh, came back like two years ago and I didn't even notice Chris brought it up to me. I was like, Oh wait, really? Bubsy came back. Fucking Bubsy came back. I, we, we've stopped talking about Felix the cat. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like on the one hand, it's, it's like a crazy absurd movie, but at the same time, like it's so all over the place. And there's, there's just like so much going on and so much of it is just nonsense. Right. Just fucking nonsense. We didn't even talk about the Mizzards. Yeah. Which you you decided were like <laughs> your sworn enemy. <laughs> I uh I did not enjoy them, but I also like it was kind of like a joking fixation almost, you know? Yeah, the fucking <laughs> I don't know, I, I hated their fucking designs. <laughs> And um, and then I, their tap dance and scene. It was when I really noticed how bad the audio editing was. I just decided that they were my enemy. Uh, but they're not really any worse than any of the other characters. It's just a bad. It's a bad movie. It's a. I, I could understand. I really could understand someone watching it and having a good time out of it. It just didn't like. At first, I kind of was, but it just didn't like maintain it. I wanted it to be over by the time it was over. I, I had a pretty good time, even if I could, like, very easily point to a lot of things wrong with this movie. Do you want to introduce Tom and Jerry for us? Sure. The Tom and Jerry movie, released in 1992, um, released in 1993 in the U.S., apparently, uh, was directed by Phil Roman, who you mentioned while we watched, is only known for directing one other movie alongside some uh, Peanuts and Garfield TV specials. Um... And the other movie he directed was Grandma Got Ran Over by a Reindeer. And I told you while watching this, that feels very in place. That feels very fitting that the person who made this would also have made Grandma Got Ran Over by a Reindeer. They feel very similar in some regards, actually. Especially with the human characters in this movie. <laughs> the movie follows Tom and Jerry. Uh, Jer uh, Tom's owner is moving away. Uh, but Tom gets stuck back at the house, which then is destroyed the next day. So Tom and Jerry are both on the streets with no home. And, uh, yeah, they're, yeah, they have no home and it's just kind of them wandering around for a bit until they come across a dog and a flea who tell them the importance of being friends with each other, which at that point they both learn that the other can speak. They both speak for the very first time, never realizing that one or the other could speak, but not only can they speak, they Don't can sing. Don't you believe it. <laughs> They sing a song, the friendship song together, and then it is then followed by, uh, after they kind of go off and see whether or not this whole friendship thing is going to work, they uh, meet a girl named Robin, who takes over the movie, takes the movie hostage, and um, she's a poor orphan, and her abusive aunt and her she, uh, lawyer... She's not an orphan, her father is alive. Yeah. 
They just use orphan as a word for her, uh, for a bit. And, uh, yeah, her aunt Fig and her aunt Fig's lawyer, uh, Lickaboot. Um, we're going to need to talk about the fucking cast in this movie. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> this movie, this movie does have notable actors in it. Um, <laughs> they, uh, they just want her for the money they can get. There's two villain songs about money in this, uh, three villain songs total. Four, if you want to count the puppet guy as a villain, even though I don't think he's like, I wouldn't call that a villain song. Hey, at least there are songs in this movie. Yeah. I mean, I even, I even like one of them, but we'll get to that. Uh, and yeah, it's just kind of like, uh, she's trying to get back to her dad who is still alive. Tom and Jerry are trying to help her do that while learning to be friends with one another. Uh, yeah, it's a shit show. It's a huge shit show. I liked it when I was a kid because I liked seeing Tom and Jerry talk. It was interesting to me back then. Um, and then as when I saw it when I was older, uh, I liked it just because of how big of it's a, to me, it's a so bad. It's good. I would still say it is. It's so fucking over the top. It's so fu- it's so st- it's such a stupid movie. It is such a stupid movie and it cracks me up. Uh, I love how fucking derailed it gets with like what it's supposed to be. Like Tom and Jerry are the focus of like the first 20 minutes. Then Robin comes in and they're kind of sharing the movie with her in the middle. And then the final act, they're just barely in it. They're like there's almost like they get so little screen time at the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, no, Tom and Jerry feel fairly inconsequential to their own movie like the first 10 minutes it feels like an actual tom and jerry movie and then they start talking and you're like why are tom and jerry talking and then they meet this little girl and that's the rest of the movie and even when they do are are in the movie after the first 10 minutes of the movie the slapstick is rare they have one slapstick scene in the movie and it's with this fucking dog character. So you're not even seeing Tom and Jerry to go at each other. You're seeing Tom and Jerry work together to go against this dog you don't give a shit about. Well, okay, that that's that's the one, like, full slapstick scene. Then there will be, like, a moment or two through the rest of the film where they're like, Haha, remember Tom and Jerry? Remember this is a Tom and Jerry movie? Because you probably forgot in the fat past 15 minutes when they didn't do anything Tom and Jerry related. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like uh, someone would argue, well, it's hard to make Tom and Jerry into a feature film. One, you don't have to make them into a feature film. That's never been an option. That's never been something you had to do. Two, I think the Magic Ring movie proves that you can do it. I mean, it's not like the Magic Ring movie. I would still rather watch Tom and Jerry in a shorter format. I don't want to watch that Magic Ring movie. But at least that movie focuses on them. At least that movie has slapstick throughout. You know, it's possible to do it. I mean, there is, like, the more recent Tom and Jerry movie from 2021. I didn't watch Pretty that. negative reviews on that one. I didn't either. But it's still, like, it feels... At the very least, they didn't make Tom and Jerry talk. Like, it's, it seems like something more true to what Tom and Jerry is. Yeah. But, I mean, even on, even on top of that, there's been, like, 20 Tom and Jerry movies over the years. Yeah. Even... Even just, like, movies where they show up in the middle of a different movie. Like, there's a Wizard of Oz one and a a, a Willy Wonka one. Yeah. Honestly, I think, like, uh... Yeah, I just don't... I I just don't know if Tom and Jerry are really characters that need to have a movie, but I get why they would since they're so popular. But, I mean, if you're gonna do it, I, I just feel like this is the worst example of what to do because it just... Derail, like yeah, and it derails it from them completely. Like it's just not, it's not about them at a point. And even when it is about them, it's not really about the Tom and Jerry that you like. It's not really about the Tom and Jerry that you watched the shorts for. It's two versions of them that speak, and that's something that, like, should have been if you knew if you cared about the characters. And it's weird to say this because the story was written by Hanna Barbera. Like they did write the story for this apparently. So it's just a weird choice. It's like Tom speaking is a joke in the shorts. Like Tom will occasionally say, you mentioned before, don't you believe it? It's like completely a bit. If he, if he's going to sing, it's being completely done as a joke and nothing else. So to have a whole movie where they're speaking, it's weird. It's just like, I don't know. You, you, I feel like you kill so much of the, I, you don't gain opportunities. When Tom and Jerry start speaking, you lose opportunities for jokes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. And and there's also it's also worth considering that like 
Tom and Jerry, really the only Tom and Jerry characters in this film, and it decides to focus a lot on characters that are not Tom and Jerry. It reminds me of The Rescuers. Huh, yeah. Have, yeah. Have you, have you seen The Rescuers? No, but I know exactly what you're talking about. I'd even say Robin looks like one of the girls in that movie. Yeah, there's like a, a bit of a Rescuers vibe to this, to the story in this. But like, Tom and Jerry are not the Rescuers. Right. Um, and look, if they if they made the movie, because here's the thing, even even despite how much of a fucking weird story this is to go with them, it's not like it was impossible if the entire movie had them consistently struggling to work together. That could have been something, you know, they could have had constant slapstick, but they really don't do that. They just occasionally get no. angry at like e each other. Like there's a scene where um, like Jerry pisses Tom off while they're trying to climb down the house. So Tom grabs Jerry and lets go of the rope and that's how he gets hurt. And that's like five seconds. Of, okay, there's five seconds of Tom and Jerry acting like themselves. There's a part on the boat where Tom accidentally throws Jerry in with a bunch of firewood to create steam on the steamboat and then quickly pulls him out like... All right, there's a couple seconds, but not even really because Tom was concerned about Jerry, which isn't in character for Tom. <laughs> the, the scenes of them having moments like that are so far and few between where it's like, even if you wanted to do the story, you should have them more involved. You should have them they're that having their dilemma being they're trying to get along, but they can't. That could lead to some slapstick. And I'm not saying it would be great. I'm not saying it'd be better than the shorts, but it would be something in this movie. Just it doesn't have anything for them. <laughs> I, like, you could convince me this is a script someone already had and then, like, slightly edited to insert Tom and Jerry. Yeah, honestly. And I think that, um, you know, it's, I think, like, I, I'm very torn on this one, on which one of these I'm going to vote to win, because I like the Tom and Jerry movie more, for sure. But where Felix the Cat, it's kind of, like, not messing with anything, it's Felix the Cat was already, I guess, kind of a weird character, and it's just kind of it's just a weird abstract movie that doesn't really work as a good movie, but it's not really like fucking anything up. This movie is like a betrayal <laughs> of the source material, you know, and I can see someone hating it so much more for that. In fact, yeah, I, I, normally you don't reveal this to me and if you don't want to reveal it right now. Don't did the audience favor the Felix the Cat movie? Uh, No, they didn't. OK, that surprises me. Because this movie is like, I could just imagine so many people hating this because of like what it doesn't do rather than what it does, you know? Yeah. I guess it'd be worth it for me to talk about the things that I do enjoy about the movie. Do you have anything you want to say? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very slow on the draw with this one, but you said it, it does feel like it's from the director of, uh, of Grandma Got Run Over the by a Reindeer. But uh, not, not, none of the human care, none of the women in this movie are near as sexy as the women in that movie. None of them have huge tits like they did in that oh, movie. Oh, that's, that's true. That's true. Yeah, there were no huge tits. The fish in Felix the Cat, however. Oh, fuck. Oh, I forgot. Oh, I forgot <laughs> the fucking fish tits in Felix the Cat. Oh, my God. God, there's like a collection of horse, uh, of, of, yeah, horse fish, seahorse, seahorse, that's what they're called, seahorses with tits in that movie, and they even have like a shot where they all line up and start dancing, and one of the moves they do is this like full-on chest rotation, where they're like gyrating their tits at the, the camera, what the fuck? <laughs> All right, you're, you're right. Tom and Jerry was better, just for that. <laughs> Here's the thing. I, what I like about the Tom and Jerry movie, one, I think the animation's better. Um, I think for the most part, it's like, maybe there's a scene or two where, like, the expressions are a bit much, but I don't know. I kind of like that. I kind of like the expressions in this movie. I think it's drawn well. I think it's animated well. I like one of the songs for real, and I like the rest of them, ironically. Um, but even the one, like, okay, so, like, okay, the song's Friends Till the End. I think is a very charming song. I, I like the lyrics to that one a lot, even though it's like, it's very simple. I mentioned that Yo Tom Perel, a person I've shown you some of his work before, did a cover of it. Yes. I sent it in the chat. I like that song a lot. I think it's like, I think it can be a very catchy and relaxing song. I don't know how I feel about it in the movie context, since Tom and Jerry are not only speaking, but now singing, which doesn't feel right. But I like the song. It's catchy. The Alleyway Cat song... Pretty terrible, but I actually kind of think it's funny how bad it is, especially because like we started making inside jokes starting it, and that made me laugh. I mean, you you said there were like 
what three villain songs <laughs> in the movie does that not also kind of count as a villain song that's the third one i'm talking about <laughs> okay because yeah the the i mean the 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 puppet guy one is up for debate because he's like not a villain in that scene but he kind of starts acting like a villain near the end of the movie there's the money is such a wonderful thing, which is such a bad song that I find it funny. And it's also what, like the song that starts with that fucking line that so many people bring up where it's that we've got to have money. <laughs> it's so fucking silly and over the top. And the fact that it's the same fucking voice as Judge Frollo from Hunchback makes me laugh even harder. Fucking Tony J, no, known for just like voice in these great villains voice, Sheer Cotton something. Was it Jungle Book or was it like a TV show for Jungle? Probably the TV show. That was a long time ago. Like he's a very notable oh, yeah. villain voice actor. I I mean, we could talk about the cast of this movie. <laughs> oh, yes, we the certainly. The cast will. of this movie is a little insane. But if you have more to say, go ahead. I was just gonna talk about some of the other like song, like that song. That song is like a so bad it's good. It's a terrible fucking song. It's terrible, but it makes me laugh. Uh, there's the Robin song, the I Miss You song. And it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's really generic, but it sounds fine. You know, like it's, it's trying to pull on your heartstrings. And, you know, Chris even mentioned while we were watching it, that it did make her cry when she was a kid. So it definitely pulled off what it was trying to pull off, but it's like, uh, it's fine. You know, it, it's like, I, I, there's a million other movies where you'd hear a song just like it, but it's not like doing anything bad. The puppet song is whatever. And I think that's all of them. Stove is a stove. No matter where you go. I don't know why you keep comparing that song. Like, that's a way better song. <laughs> it is a way better song. <laughs> and it's a fucking joke. <laughs> like, it's a it's a parody of the type of song this is. And it's yeah. so much better than this song. It, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> There's so much joke opportunity, I feel, while watching this movie, too. Like, the fucking vet guy. There's the shot of him, like, he gets kicked out of the car because his two henchmen who are being very sketchy about what is seen by most people legitimate business. They go around wearing masks, not really painting themselves as an innocent uh, corporation. Yeah. But they kick him out of the car because they want to go get the money for themselves. This million dollars, that's a completely, like, theoretical I, thing, which that's something we yeah, should... I'll we, let you we, explain we, that. <laughs> we gotta talk about this. So the, <laughs> the, the villainous's plan is like, oh, we're gonna offer... Uh, it's actually it's actually Bootlick's plan. Yeah. But uh, their plan is, oh, we're going to offer a million dollar reward for anyone who brings in this little girl. But their plan is actually that they're not going to give away the million dollars, which I I see legal issues arising with that. <laughs> But gently setting that aside, near the end, she is racing these two other guys to get the girl back. Because they want the million dollars, but she knows the million dollars is a fucking lie? So, <laughs> what what is she doing? Why is she involved in this? <laughs> like, why does she care if she beats them? Let them get ahead, capture the girl, and then she'll be like, okay, checks in the mail, later. Right. Oh, it's just, it's just fucking nonsense. But yeah, I was, I was mentioned like, cause like the one guy who, like, who owns the animal shelter, it's just a shot where he sees an ice cream truck, uh, truck, not even a truck, like a little cart. And the way that like, okay, so he wants to go and take the cart so he can be part of the race. One, what a horrible fucking vehicle. You're not going to be, and it even shows in the scenes. It's not like, oh, in the scenes, it's like, mira it's like cartoonish and miraculously fast. He is going much slower than everyone in the race scene. And he has all this confidence while he's doing it. He looks like a fucking idiot. But the way he approaches it in the first place, it looks like he is about to fucking murder someone. It is the shot of him slowly oh, no, looking to walking towards the camera with the biggest grin on his face. How have none of these characters been caught being evil yet? If you cut out the part of like the previous shot where it zooms in on the cart, it just kind of looks like he he's being a creep. Yeah. He looks over, sees these kids <laughs> buying ice cream, and then like makes this evil face and stalks <laughs> towards the camera. There's just so many little moments like that. There's just so much to make fun of while watching this movie. So I get a lot of ironic enjoyment out of it. I guess let's talk about this insane cast. Yeah, because there is a lot of people to talk about here. So Tom is voiced by Richard Kind. <laughs> uh, which is like, 
in, in insane to me. They did a lot of great stuff. I love Richard Kind. Yeah, no, Richard Kind has done a lot of crazy stuff. He, I mean, he's he's been in a few Pixar films. Yeah, Bing, um, Bing Bong. Uh, he was who was he in Bugs Life? He was in Bugs Life. Oh no, he's the he's the brother of the main grasshopper. That's right. Yeah, he's he's the brother. He's the grasshopper's brother. But he's he's in a lot of good stuff. He's a funny guy. He is in Garfield the movie, so this is his second appearance. <laughs> oh, right. which one was he in? Garfield. Oh, right. Yeah, he was in A Serious Man. He played a role in one of the seasons of Brockmire. I love this guy. Yeah, uh, he was in... Um... Shit, Obvious Child. That's the one you asked me to watch. Obvious right, Child. right. It says he was in Bo is Afraid, which I haven't seen yet, but... Bo is Afraid, yeah. Yeah, he's he, he has a very small role in Bo is Afraid, but he's pretty good in it. He was in Santa Buddies, which I reviewed back in the day. Oh, boy. Yeah, Richard Kind, great actor. Weird that he oh, yeah. is the voice of Tom. This was early in his career, but even then, I, I feel like he was maybe above this. I don't know. I guess if you get asked to voice Tom in the Tom and Jerry movie, you say yes. Right. And I mean, he, I think it's like, if you're going to give Tom a voice, that's an acceptable voice for him to have. I would say the same thing about Jerry, honestly. Like, the voices that they have, it's like, yeah, okay. I mean, they shouldn't be speaking. Them speaking is the problem. But you could pick someone worse for both of them. Yeah. Because their voices, if I, ha if I had to hear a voice come out of them... I guess I'd be okay with either one of those, but it's just, I, I yeah, it's just, it's just the bottom line is you don't make them speak. It's uh, Dana Hill as Jerry, who's done some voice acting work. Yeah, and also, I guess, was in one of the National, well, actually a couple of the National Lampoon movies. Yeah, she was, I think, the daughter in a European Vacation. She was in Rover Dangerfield, who makes a cameo in this movie. I mentioned Tony J already. Uh, fantastic fucking voice. Like he he is like Judge Frollo is like one of the best villain voices I think I've ever heard in my life. Oh yeah, such a such a dirtbag. So fucking it's like up there with Jeremy Irons a scar. It's fucking perfect. Rip Taylor as Captain Kitty. Rip Taylor has definitely been in stuff. I've heard that name before. I can't remember from what. I don't know. He was like a well-known comedian back in the day. Mm hmm. I will say, like, a lot of the people in these movies are dead now. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing about that, but it just, yeah, there's a... I keep clicking on them and it says died this year. It's like, God. Andy M McAfee. McAfee as Robin. Did a lot of Land Before Time movies. That's every. That's essentially everything that I'm seeing from her right now. And that checks out. She was Sarah in most of the Land Before Time movies. Not the original one, but pretty much all the sequels. She was Sarah. Uh, I thought for a second I was about to say, oh, she was in a fucking, uh, I thought this was from that one company that you talked about, but no, it's definitely not looking into it further. Dink the Little Dinosaur. What's that? Why can I think of it? I'm going to feel like an idiot once you say Dingo. it. Dingo? Yeah, okay, it's not Dingo. Dingo. I saw the poster, I was like, oh, this looks like Dingo, but actually looking at it, it's definitely not Dingo. She was in the Clint Howard movie, The Ice Cream Man. <laughs> well, she has real potential if she worked with the king. Charlotte Ray was an interesting one because they kept, like, in the credits, both the intro and the film credits, they were, like, in Charlotte Ray as Aunt Fig. So they were, like, like mention her name and character, and they only do that if it's someone they really want to bring attention to. Um, so who, sh what is Charlotte Ray known for? I, I, I guess maybe shows that used to be popular. I don't recognize the, the Facts of Life, Different Strokes, The Facts of Life Reunion. Facts of Life, I'm assuming, was yeah. a popular thing. Yeah, probably. Anyone else that you want to mention here? Yes, uh, the, the policeman. The policeman in this movie is voiced by Tino Insana. Mm. He voices Pig in Back at the Bar. Right, bar. right. I, I, I swear to God, he, he's got to be Fred in some of the Scooby-Doo cartoons. He sounds just like him. He was in a few uh, John Candy movies, and then he got to voice John Candy in Spaceballs the Animated Series. <laughs> or, well, he got to voice Barf. That's... 
I mean, I think that's all of the cast worth mentioning. I think it is worth saying that uh, Droopy Dog has a cameo in the film. I'm looking at his voice actor right now. Yeah, Which, he. I was because the main reason I'm looking him up is I'm just like he's had to have voiced in something we've talked about already. I bet if we looked at every single one of these voice actors, one of them would be in Care Bears, My Little Pony, Rapsy Street Kids, something like that. But uh, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not ready to do all the digging. <laughs> I the droopy dog cameo in this was so big he's like the one character on the poster who isn't Tom or Jerry. Yeah, you know I, I was going to mention this earlier. I find it weird because they met, met, gave him a cameo, which they they often like to give droopy cameos in these. I know in the fucking Willy Wonka <laughs> movie he gets arrested for faking one of the tickets, which was kind of funny. Um, they like putting droopy in the Tom and Jerry movies, though. Like give him a little cameo. You know what I thought was weird, though? Because you mentioned that none of the characters were in this, like, other than Tom and Jerry, which is true. Yeah, so why wasn't, like, the dog at the beginning of the movie the dog from the Tom and Jerry shorts? Yeah, there's, like, distinctly a bulldog at the start of this movie that is not Spike. Yeah, and it just feels like they could have been him. Like, it would have been an easy cameo. Yeah, I guess that's about everyone to mention from this, though. <sighs> when are we going to do cartoon all-stars to the rescue, Matt? Uh, when we finally do that... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shit. <laughs> I think that's all I got about Tom and Jerry. Do you have anything else? No, just, uh, yeah, definitely a bastard is bastardization of uh, the source material. But uh, do I find it more entertaining to watch than Felix the Cat the movie? Absolutely. All right. We've made it to the portion of the evening where I have to disagree with you. I guess you get first vote since I introduced the first movie. It's a little tricky this time because I do think one probably committed a bigger sin than the other, but I am going to give it to the Tom and Jerry movie. I just think that it flows a lot better and I get more enjoyment out of it. Uh, if it was animated poorly, maybe I'd give it to Felix the Cat just because I do like some of the illustrations in that movie, but I, I feel like Tom and Jerry does enough right where I can put it over Felix the Cat. To me, Tom and Jerry the movie is an absolutely bog-standard kids' film that does not understand Tom and Jerry as characters. <laughs> Where Felix the Cat the movie, I mean, it pulls a few superficial elements, but it's also based around a character that people probably don't care as much about. And also it's just like a weird, surreal, nonsensical movie that is a lot more fun than than this extremely bland standard like I, I i know they exclude tom and jerry through a lot of it but it's such standard affair i even for like a tom and jerry movie mm -hmm. i just i i can't i can't i can't give it to tom and jerry i enjoy i enjoyed felix the cat so much more <laughs> and i feel like it does much less of a disservice to the character but who wins that's the so real my, question my vote is for felix the cat we got a lot of votes on this one. We got 120 votes on this one. I we've we've been getting a lot of votes on these polls lately. But uh, uh out of 120 votes, it's uh 3169 in favor of Tom and Jerry the movie. I maintain my perfect score because we canceled out my one loss on that live stream. I am a genius. <laughs> I disagree. I, I, <laughs> I don't strongly disagree because ultimately I do not care about these two movies. But gun to my head, I, I, I'd watch Felix the Cat every single time over Tom and Jerry. Hey, Matt. Yeah. We two were friends till the end. Ain't we my friend? I definitely know the words. Coffee head cream. Boy, what a team. You'll never find two other guys compatible as steak and fries, but one of them does have a lot more wins on Hollow Victories. Not a lot more. Usually we, <laughs> we do agree, agree most of the time. That, that, that helps your average is that you and I agree <laughs> yeah. pretty much all the time and we just like completely disregard the audience. <laughs> I just, we just happen to disagree on the stupidest fucking, like, lineup that <laughs> exists, and the audience sides with me on that one. <laughs> yeah, no, you and the audience are wrong this time. Tom and Jerry wins. Yeah!
Good job, audience. I'm very, I'm very proud of you. That might be the winner I disagree with the most, honestly. <laughs> I'm very proud of you, audience. Oh, uh, you're probably thinking of some way to torture me with the show for the next episode, so I don't want to like. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear it. <laughs> uh, f- f- fortunately for you, I already had the next two picked out. Okay. So, uh, Michael, do you remember a little movie called uh, Pirates of the Caribbean? I do. Curse of the Black Pearl. Mm-hmm. It was based on like a Disney D- Disneyland ride. Yeah. You remember you remember how like right around that there were like two other movies also based on Disney rides that did not do nearly as well? I remember one. So next time on Hollow Victories, it's the Haunted Mansion versus the Country Bears. Shit, okay, I do remember the Country Bears and that you mention it. Haunted Mansion was the one I remembered. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Haunted Mansion 2003? Yeah, there was another one that came out. Haunted Mansion 2003. Country Bears actually came before uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, 2002. Yeah, Country Bears is an interesting one because it was one where I saw the trailers for it as a kid. I was not a critical kid at all. And I'm not going to say this was the first time I ever like I ever like thought I was too good for a movie, but I watched. I saw the trailer and I'm like, I don't want to... This looks like shit. I don't want to watch this. <laughs> yeah... But I was, like, first yeah. in line to rent a uh, Haunted Mansion from Blockbuster. And I remember almost nothing about it. I'm sure that says a lot about the movie. <laughs> I remember the singing heads. Disappointing. Yeah. How long has it been since uh, you've seen Curse of the Black Pearl? Oh, pretty... Uh, is, that, is that the first? That's the first one, right? Uh, well, yeah, the first, the first uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, yes. Yeah, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. Do you want to do an Out of the Ring on that? Sure. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen them. I, I'd be down to watch them. Assuming, I wa- uh, assuming I get around to it, I still have not made the Wreck-It Ralph oh, right. recorded. <laughs> right, right. I, I remember... That's lo- like two months old at this point. When I was younger, I loved the first three movies a lot. Uh, I don't remember them too well. It's been a long time. I really only watched each of them once, but I really liked all three of them. Um, I don't think I've seen past the second one. I didn't watch the fourth one, and I think there was even a fifth one that came out. I There's like seven. Really? Shit. Yeah, I didn't know that. I thought there was only five. But uh, yeah, I only watched the first three. By the time the fourth one came out, I was kind of like, what's the point? Because it felt like the third one ended it. Two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm wrong. There's five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, uh, thought, I thought there was at least a sixth one. I don't blame you. I mean, I, you know what? I bet there was... I bet... You know what it probably is? It's probably that trial. They, they like, they like announced the sixth one, and then like, oh wait, uh, Johnny Depp's kind of being canceled. We're just gonna like not make this one, and also like no one cares about Pirates of the Caribbean anymore. <laughs> like, why did they make the fourth one? Why the th- the second and third one? Sure. Why did they make the fourth one? People, I don't know anyone. I d- I know no one who's seen the fourth movie. The the second and third one I can at least say I watched with my family. <laughs> I don't know anyone who wanted to watch fucking Pirates of the Caribbean 4. Like, just let it die after a while. Yeah. Alright. So that next time we're talking about uh, Disneyland ride movies from the early 2000s. Interesting pair up. I, yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, cool. Looking forward to it. Alright. Uh, until next time... Uh, I'm your host, Matt Presents, uh, from my co-host, Movie Mackle. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. We gotta be tenacious like Tom, resilient like Jerry, dog like Spike, hungry like Nephew, sexy cat.